Welcome to another edition of Pause for Thought with me, Greg. Today, I thought I'd just do a short uh, reflection as it is the 23rd anniversary of 9-11. Of course, 9-11 was the terrorist attack against the World Trade Center in New York, where planes were flown deliberately into the skyscrapers, the twin skyscrapers. And over 3,000 people lost their lives, including over 65 British. I remember that at the time I was working in Derby, in Derbyshire, and I was sitting in the uh, coffee room waiting to go into a meeting with the Learning and Skills Council because we put a bid in for funding for training courses. And it was the time for review of the, that bid and to see whether we were successful or not. And as I'm drinking coffee with the television in front of me, I'm watching live the first plane hit. And then the second plane hit. And it was like watching a film. It seemed so unreal. And devastating. Of course, I had to gird up my loins and go into the meeting and be professional. And thankfully, we got the funding, but it was a grim day for us and for the world. And I also remember the day after, on the 12th of September, the Queen breaking hundreds of years of royal protocol for the changing of the guards to play the Star Spangled Banner, the National Anthem of America. There was hardly a dry eye in the place for those who watched. It was such a gesture of love for our cousins in America and the close relationship that we have and our care for each other. And then for the 20th anniversary, just a year before our beloved Queen passed away, she allowed a memorial at Windsor Castle and allowed the same national anthem to be played. It's one of those times where you think, where were you? when that happened. It's indelibly written in your mind and in your emotions. You know, I feel the emotions I had on that day. And that began the beginning, I suppose you could say, of the world going mad. Revenge, vengeance, trying to save face. How could this happen in the United States? And the hatred to those who had done it. And so they decided that a robust response was necessary. I understand that. It began two wars, Iraq and later Afghanistan, and even the politicians made up reasons why they should go to these wars. But my question is this, was it proportional, was it right? Did we have to try and destroy those nations completely? And we failed, by the way, because it was terrorists that had done it, who resided in those places. Why didn't we just go after the terrorists rather than the whole population? Obviously, conspiracy theories were that, well, because these terrorists 
we're in charge of these nations, I suppose like in Hamas being in charge of Gaza, they might stop the West from getting the massive oil reserves that we need. And so it's worth wiping them out and everybody with it so that we safeguard our fuel. And then what comes to mind is the double standards. Three thousand people is a huge and terrible and wicked tragedy. But what happens when you look at Israel and what happened on the 7th of October with the evil thing that happened of those people that were massacred, babies, young people, adults, old people, and the hostages taken, even taking dead bodies, so they had a, a negotiation tactic. And what about the tens of thousands of rockets fired against Israel? And the proportional response from them, the holding back. They didn't hold back with 9-11. And what about the reason why Israel's in this tragic position? America had forced Israel to give up Gaza in exchange for peace. And not long after, the Palestinian Authority lost control during an election to Hamas. And that was the end of that. If we in the UK had one missile against us, we'd obliterate them. So why are the double standards? The double standards are because they are God's people on God's land. And people hate them because the enemy hates them. And unfortunately, the world has not moved away from going mad. The change to culture, the change to faith and following of Jesus rather than following religion. The bias media reaction to when a Christian stands out and says something, which is in the Bible, compared to a Muslim who says something. And the fear of the authorities and all those around not to upset them. The double standards are shocking. But then Jesus said before he returns, yes will be no and no will be yes. There'll be deceit. There'll be lies. My goodness, we've seen the increase of lies and, and untruths and embroidered truth. It's like somebody saying, well, that's your truth. It's not my truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The So what can we learn about this? All we can do as Christians is pray. Pray for forgiveness. Pray for mercy. Pray for peace, which comes through people finding Jesus. in Iran and China and places around the world where it's forbidden to be a, a believer in Jesus, revival is breaking out in a massive way. Tens of thousands of mosques have closed in Iran as over a million people have given their lives to Jesus. 
And it's life and death for them. But also we have to remember that when we seek revenge, vengeance, the Lord says, pray for your enemies. Love those who hate you. Turn the other cheek. Forgive 70 times 7. And we read in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Revenge and vengeance never turns out for good in the end. And all we can do is pray and live our lives as Jesus would want us to be living our lives. And following in his footsteps, blessed are the peacemakers for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You don't make peace with terrorists and people who are evil. But you don't go on a mad rampage and destroy the innocent with the wicked. And that's why the wicked use innocent people as human shields. Because some people have got morals and they haven't. So let's pray. Lord, on this 23rd anniversary of 9-11, the 11th of September, and the terrorist attack in New York, we pray that you will do a new thing, that you will bring revival to our nations, a return to our Christian Judeo foundations, that you will transform hearts and minds, and that you will give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding and discernment by your Holy Spirit. that we will know the difference between good and evil. And we'll be able to discern lies from the real truth. And that you'll help us to bear much fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, self-control, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, repentance and forgiveness. We pray for justice. And we hand these wicked people into your hands. That you will deal with them. And that our leaders and our religious leaders will turn back to you. That you may guide them. This is the way. Walk in it. Don't have vengeance. Hatred or seeking revenge, because all it does is make you worse than them. I ask this all in Jesus' name, in the power of the blood. Amen. So, until next time, it's a big God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.